Okay, so this next project that we're going to be building is a clone of Pinterest. If you don't have a Pinterest account, I encourage you to sign up for one, uh, see what the experience is like, see how it works. Um, we're going to be building some things in here that are slightly different, but I think what you'll, you'll really like what we're going to end up building. So um, the first thing I want to have you notice is that we have things here on the screen. These are called pins, uh, and they have an image, they have a description. Um, they have the person who posted it and in what um, board it was posted. In. So here we have architecture and emergency preparedness, interiors and exteriors. Uh, and up here, if I click on my name, we can go to my account. You can see the number of pins that I've pinned, um, the number of things that I've liked, the number of followers that I have, the number of people that I'm following, and then the number of boards. And so Pinterest lets you organize pins, which are individual pieces of content, by a board so you can organize it by a theme or a topic and we're going to go ahead and start off with just building out the pins and the users and then we can look into organizing boards adding likes uh, and eventually following other users um, but you can see here that i have the ability to edit my profile and change my password log in log out all that kind of stuff so we're going to be building that uh, today and let's go ahead and close pinterest here uh, I'm in my projects directory here, and I'm going to kick off this with a new Rails app. So let's go ahead and just do Rails new Pinterest. Uh, for your project, I encourage you to um, do something a little bit outside of the box in terms of uh, not naming it Pinterest and copying everything directly, um, but instead maybe come up with a niche version of Pinterest. So it could be um, you know, a sports version of Pinterest where all of the pins and content are sports related or around some kind of fiction like Star Wars or Star Trek, something like that. Uh, I'm going to just call it Pinterest so that you don't get confused as you're watching this video, uh, but this is just the name of our application. So I'm going to go ahead and generate that Rails app. We'll give that a second. And that's been installed. So now I'm going to CD into the project, make sure we spell it right, and let's just go ahead and kick off the server to verify that everything is working properly. So here we get that welcome aboard um, default Rails um, page, which is great. So we know everything is working. I'm going to go ahead and keep that open and open a new tab in my terminal. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and generate a home controller with an index method so that we can get rid of this welcome aboard screen. So let's do rails generate controller home index. And so that will create our home controller with an index method. And let's go ahead and open this project in Atom so we can take a look at that. And so now so far everything in here should be um, pretty much stock rails but you can see now we have this home controller with our index method. And if we go into our views, we have this uh, index page. So let's go ahead and change our h1. This is just a clone. And this will show out um, this HTML to us once we update our routes. So if I go under config routes, we want to get rid of our um, default welcome aboard page. So I'm going to change this get home slash index to root home pound index and what this will do is allow us to set our new route to that home page so if I refresh over here we should get that Pinterest this is just a clone uh, index page that we just looked at so here's that code we'll close that and so far we have no functionality there's no concept of pins and there's no concept of users. So what I'm going to do in this video is first install Devise, which is a gem that we're going to be using for user management. And then we'll get into building out the pins that we're actually going to have under user management. And so let's go ahead and pull up rubygems.org. And again, the gem name is called Devise. So let's search for that. And this first one, version 4.1.1. Uh, is what we want. So flexible authentication solution for Rails. And we can see over off to the side that we have access to the documentation, which we're going to need. So let's open that. But then we also want this gem device with a version number. So let's go ahead and copy that. And 
we can go ahead and close RubyGems. So now we're in our documentation for Devise. You can come in here and see uh, what features it supports as well as how to install it. So if we read the Getting Started guide here, um, we can see that we need to add this to our gem file. We just copied that, so let's go ahead and add that to our gem file. And I'm just going to go ahead and place that right here. And when we do that, we need to run the bundle command to actually install it. So I'm going to do bundle install, and we'll go ahead and see that our bundle is complete. And then we get another command. So we're going to run rails generate device install. This will kick off the install script, and we can start using device. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you do so, you're going to get some feedback here of some things you need to do. So the first thing here is that we need to ensure that we have default URL options in our environment files. Um, this is what it gives us here. So we're going to go ahead and place this inside of config environments slash development rb. And we're also going to do this in production um, with the host of our actual application. So this would be whatever the domain is that you're going to have. Uh, we'll do this a little bit later. But let's go ahead and copy this one and add it to our development environment. So again, you can find those under config, environments, and then development.rb. Let's go ahead and add a comment here, added per device instructions. So we'll close that. And number two, ensure that you have a root URL defined in your config slash routes. So we have already done this. So we can see here an example of root two, home pound index. We just did that, so we can skip that step. Uh, next, we want to add some flash messages in app views layouts application.html.erb. So when device allows users to log in, or in the case of a user not being allowed to edit something or create something, uh, it will surface some alerts or some notices that we can then use to display back to the user for user feedback. Um, those items are created, and if you don't have a way of displaying them, then the user will never see them. So. We're going to go into our layouts file. So here's where our uh, HTML boilerplate is. And I'm going to paste these in here, just like this. We're going to be cleaning this up a little bit later with Bootstrap. So I'm going to just keep these here for now. And we'll just do that. Uh, number four here, it says if you're using uh, Heroku with Rails 3.2, we're not doing that. So we can skip this step. And then finally, we're going to generate our device views. So let's go ahead and run that command. And you'll see that we have a whole bunch of files just got created. So if I go into views, you'll see that I have this folder now called device. Uh, and it's got inside of it a bunch of folders with uh, edit and new and other pages that we need for being able to log in and create new users. So at this point, we have gone through our full install process and we're ready to create a new model for our user. So instead of doing Rails generate model user like we're used to, we're actually going to generate a device model. And so they've given us this command here, uh, Rails generate device model. And in our case, we're going to do user. Um, but you could also make this like member or whatever makes sense for your application. So let's go ahead and do Rails generate device user. And this is going to create a migration for us and a model. So if we take a look at those things, we can go into um, slash db slash migrate, and you'll see here that we have device create users. And this is going to create a table for us called users. The user has an email, encrypted password, uh, and a whole bunch of other things that we have here, like um, when were the last, was the last time that they signed in, what was their IP address, and things like that. So um, we can see all of that, and we want to actually generate that table. So let's do rake db migrate to run our migration. We do that. We'll see that we have created our new table. We've added a few indexes, and we should now have uh, a functioning users table. So if we look at the schema um, under db, you'll see that this is what our representation of our schema looks like right now. That looks good. Uh, you, again, you didn't have to define all of these things. Devise is doing it for us, which is really great. 
So we can go ahead and close out of that. And let's see. We can run rake routes to now see all of the different URLs that we have access to. In this case, we have now users slash sign in, sign out, sign up, users edit, users slash password, new. Um, so this is really great. We have a whole bunch of functionality here that we didn't have to write from scratch. Uh, lots of people rely and use device for their authentication. So uh, we know that we can trust it initially uh, while we're learning to build out our applications. So let's go ahead and try going to users slash sign up. Uh, one thing you'll have to do is once you've installed Devise, you will need to stop and then restart your Rails server. So I'm going to do that now. So now we're good there. So now we still have our home pound index here, but we should be able to now go to users slash sign up. And you'll see here that these are just very standard views, um, but we have a form and this form was generated for us. If I click on login, it'll take us to a login page. So we have users slash sign in with an email and a password. Uh, if I click on forgot password, you'll see here the URL changes again to URL users slash password slash new. And here's the ability for you to give it an email address and reset your password. Um, so what I want to do is just look at where these views are real quick. So uh, you can see them by looking at the URLs. But if I go into views, device, you'll see that we have access to sessions. So sessions new. Here is where we can see that we have uh, the email, password field, submit for login, uh, registrations is where we're going to be able to create new users. Sessions are going to be how we create a new login. So when you're creating a login, you're actually generating a user session. And when we're creating an actual user, we would want to create an actual uh, new user. And so uh, all of these options are here. The forgot password page is here, password slash new. So you can actually uh, eventually come in and add something like Bootstrap and make all of those forms look a lot nicer than they are right now. But let's go ahead and create a new account. Let's do that and we'll sign up. And you'll see here that we have welcome, you have signed up successfully. That is coming from those flash messages that we added to our layout. So if I refresh that page, that actually goes away and you don't see it anymore. Right now we're logged in, but we don't really have an ability to see that that's the case. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and add a few links to our uh, home index here. So let's go into views, home, index. And what I want to do is just create a link to the login page. So we're going to go ahead and do the Ruby uh, link to. Let's make sure we include our equal sign so that this gets output. And we're going to go ahead and say login. And let's check our routes again. So if we come over to our routes page here, we want to take them to a uh, login page. So let's see, new user session is right here. So user slash sign in, that's the correct URL we want. So we can do new user session underscore path. And then now let's also do the same for sign up. I'm going to just copy this. Let's do sign up. And we, if we look at that, we can see new user registration will take us to the ability to sign up. So let's do new user registration underscore path. And if I refresh our page here, you'll see that we have a login and a sign up. If I click on login, it'll tell us that we're already signed in. And this is another flash message. So we don't really want to show these things when we're already logged in. But if we click on sign up, you'll also get the same message. You're already signed in. So what we want to do is we want to actually use Ruby to detect whether or not we've been logged in and maybe display something else on our screen here. So we'll do that next. Okay. So what we want to do here is we want to do an if statement around these uh, login and sign up buttons so that we can display something else if you're actually logged in. So if we go into Atom, uh, we see here that we have our Ruby, uh, embedded Ruby here. So we can actually create an if statement. And Devise gives us a few helper items that will allow us to detect if someone's logged in, and then eventually we can also detect if they're 
the owner of some kind of content. So in the case of our pins or our profile, we wouldn't want a user to be able to edit someone else's pins. Um, but for right now, let's just check to see if the user is signed in. So there is a uh, method here called if user signed in question mark. So user signed in question mark is going to be a method that's going to return the actual uh, true or false whether or not we have a logged in session or not. So let's go ahead and do if user signed in do and we will go ahead and do an end here and if we're logged in we're not going to be able to see these. Um, let's go ahead and refresh that here and it looks like I got something wrong here. Yeah. So what this will do is this is actually going to be the opposite. So this is if the user signed in showed these things, we want to do else and and let's move this into here. And let's just say you are signed in. And what this will do here now is if the user is signed in, we'll tell them that they're signed in, um, we can put a logout button here. We'll do that shortly. Uh, but then now if we're not logged in, we'll display these here. So let's go ahead and refresh this. It says that you are logged in. So there is a way to create a logout button. So let's do link to logout. And we need to look at our paths here. So we want to go ahead and sign out. So this is this destroy user session path here. And so we have devise user sessions. Okay. So we want to go ahead and do destroy user session path. Um, but we also have to make sure that we get the method or the verb correct. So we need to make sure we do a delete here. So let's do method colon delete. And we'll save that. And now we should have our logout button. If I click that, we get successfully signed out. And now you see the login and the sign up button. So we've added very few lines of code so far, but now we have this ability to log in. I could sign up and create a new user. But let's go ahead and use the one that I just made. We can re log back in, successfully signed in. This is a clone, you are signed in, log out. So we don't really need to tell a user that they're signed in, so we can get rid of that. Um, we do want to be able to let them view their profile though. So let's go ahead and do another link. And let's do link to um, edit profile. And let's check our routes one more time here. We should have the ability to edit a user. So if we take a look here, we have uh, edit user registration, which is slash user slash edit. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab that path. And let's add path to the end of that. And add a pipe in there just to make it separated. Now if we're signed in, we should see edit profile, log out. If I click on edit profile, we now will be taken to this almost like a settings screen. So here's our email address where we can change it. Uh, we can change our password using our current password and a new password. Or we can actually delete our entire account. So this is a, like a cancel my subscription or my account. Uh, and then we can have a back. So there's our edit profile. Here's our logout. When we do that, um, if we try to do user slash edit now, we'll see that you need to sign up uh, or sign in in order to continue. So it's very powerful. Devise gives us all this functionality um, right out of the box. And next up, what we can do is actually generate our pins and have models and controllers for creating our Pinterest models. And then we can associate those with those users so that you can log in, create pins, delete pins, edit pins, and so forth. Uh, and the other thing that we'll also want to do is start to make this look a little bit nicer. So we'll bring in Bootstrap and start to customize this to make it look uh, like a real live web app.